Hello and welcome to our online class. I'm Luann Hartley, National Education Manager for Juki America. And today we're going to make this little cute beverage coaster. Now some of you call this a mug rug. I've chosen to use red, white, and blue patriotic colors for my project. But you could certainly do other types of projects with different themes. Here's a nice baby theme I did with using some soft thread colors. And then here's another variation of the beverage coaster where I used regular quilting instead of the free motion quilting. So what we're going to talk about today is how to do tapering, how to learn to stack stitches so that you can create your own trims. We're going to use this nice decorative stitch that's built into the machine and when you put two of these together, you'll get a 14 millimeter stitch instead of the traditional seven millimeter stitches that are built in. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about free motion quilting and how to set up your machine for that and do some free motion quilting on our beverage coaster. So I hope you have fun today in the class. So let's get started. We're bringing you this class today through YouTube Premiere Video. And what that actually means is, although this class has been pre-recorded, we're going to be with you today while you're watching this video. So you can interact with us and we can interact with you through the comments and the live chat page. So as you're watching the video, please feel free to send us your comments if you have any questions about what you're seeing in the class or any questions in general. And we will be here during the entire video to answer those questions. So I hope you enjoy this. I already have all of the fabrics cut out. In addition to the fabrics, you will need a spool of navy blue thread, a spool of red thread, a spool of variegated, which I already have on my machine. It's a red, white, and blue variegated if you're going to use this color theme. And then I also have regular sewing thread. Now to get the information that you need for cutting the fabrics and for all the supplies, you can go to our website, um, jukiquilting.com. We have this already there and you can print out these instructions. It will be under the e-learning tab and it's called Beverage Coaster. So in addition to the fabrics and the threads, you're going to need some accessory feet, some Juki accessory feet. So we're going to be using the, it's the eye foot and in the manual it's called the manual buttonhole foot. But this is a clear foot so that you can see as you're doing your decorative stitching and it also has the groove out in the back so that those thick stitches like a satin stitch will flow smoothly through the machine. We're also going to use our patchwork foot and then we're going to use our free motion quilting foot. So you can go ahead and pull those out. So I have the line on the presser foot lined up with the drawn line. The center of the presser foot has a little notched area there. And you'll notice that the needle is over to the right of that. That drawn line that we have that extended here, the needle is actually on that line. We've selected our stitch. Don't forget to put your tear away behind your, your fabric that you're going to be stitching on. And then we're ready to stitch. It will start tapering immediately, and then it will go into the satin stitch. So just as we sew, keep that mark on the presser foot, on the line that we drew. And we're gonna sew all the way down that line. So if this is something you're doing at the same time I'm doing, you have plenty of time to do the stitching. We're going to stitch all the way around all four sides. Just make sure that you keep the line lined up with the mark on the foot. This will make sure all of our corners are nice and neat.
Now as we get down to the end down here, to this next intersection, we're actually going to stop when the needle touches this line. And then we're going to end the pattern which will create the miter. And to do that, we're going to touch our pattern end icon right here, our button on the front of our machine. This works as our pattern end and also as our tie on and tie off. So as I get down to that intersection, I'm just gonna slow my machine down a little bit because I wanna stop right when that needle touches that line. And I like to stop with my needle down on the right side. Now we're gonna tap the pattern end and continue to sew. It will mire the corner, it will stop. And again, we wanna stop with our needle in the down position. I haven't set mine in the down position. I need to stop and do that. Let me stop right quick and put the needle in the down position. There's an icon on the screen that will put that in the down position for me. Now, all we're gonna do is pivot. I just did a right turn pivot or right angle pivot line that drawn line back up with the notch on the presser foot and start to sew. The miter will start again at the beginning. And we're just gonna continue to sew down. And when we get to the next intersection, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to wait till that needle touches that line. Stop with the needle on the right side. And again, I slow down. Wait till that needle gets right on that line. Touch your pattern in and continue to sew to finish the pattern and get the miter. And then we're gonna turn. Drop the presser foot. It should be lined up again. Shouldn't have to make any adjustments and continue down the other line. And we're gonna do that one more time down here and then I'm gonna show you how to line it up to finish it so that you get a nice miter corner. or comments about this class, please let us know. All right, we're coming down to the next intersection. So again, I'm gonna slow down. Nice thing about this foot is it is clear so I can see when I'm right at the line. Touch the pattern in key and continue. Pivot and continue to sew. Now when we get down to the beginning again, and we have to end this off. We do the same thing, we just have to line it up a little bit different.
All right, so we're at the end and we want to make a nice miter again. Let me clip my threads and get them out of the way. So you, you sort of have to watch where you started. I'm going to zoom the camera in a little bit and see if you can see this a little bit better, if I can get it to focus. There we go. So we won't, maybe our goal is to stop with the needle on the line, but we need to pay more attention now to the stitching instead of just the line. And you want to keep stitching until this actually goes over the previous stitching. Maybe about three or four stitches in. And I know it's hard to see. Let me see if I can raise the needle up. I'm going to take the presser foot off here so that you can see. I've actually gone over the previous stitching about three or four stitches I've come in on there. So let me see if I can get this back on. Working with one hand so that... All right. So once we've done that, I put my needle back down. We're going to hit the pattern tie off again and continue to sew. And that will start the miter. Here's my thread trimmers. And I know we're using a, a white thread and it's actually the white and the blue have come together. Let me get this into the camera. And you can actually see that mitered corner there. And that's pretty good. Now the first few ones that I did, I didn't line up very easily or it didn't look very nice. So I thought, well, there's got to be a way I can get these nice corners. You see these corners here? These are the ones where I didn't have to do anything but pivot. And I've got my nice corners there. And I thought, well, this one's not exactly perfect. So there's a way we can cheat. So I always like to try to find a solution when I do something and maybe it doesn't quite turn out the way I had expected. So with this, I thought, well, you know what? When we start the stitch, and it starts that miter. There's no way to begin that stitching without the mitering. So I thought, let's take a scrap piece of fabric, start the stitching, wait until the mitering gets finished and you're doing the actual full zigzag. And then just stop. Now don't use your thread trimmers because what that does is it tells the machine that you finished that stitch and it will start the stitch at the beginning again. So just raise your needle and your presser foot and cut those threads. Now we're actually going to go to our project which would have been this. And we're just going to start maybe in the middle of a line. So instead of starting on a corner, we're starting in the middle of the line, lining it up as we had before. I'll start down here. And now when it starts to stitch, it's doing the zigzag. The miter has already been finished on a scrap piece of fabric. So now we can do the same thing. We can stitch down to our line, stop with the needle on the right side of that, Touch our pattern in, do our miter, and pivot and continue on. Which is the same thing we have we did on, on our project here. But now what's going to happen is as I'm coming around the whole entire area here, I'm going to end on a straight line. So now what will happen is I'm, I would get rid of these threads. When I've turned the last corner that I have to turn and I'm stitching back down here, I'm just going to stitch over the previous stitching, maybe about five or six stitches. Touch my reverse stitch because reverse will work as a stop and lock stitch. So if I stitched here and touched my pattern end, it would stop and do the miter and that's not what we want. 
we want to stitch over this satin stitching a little bit and we want to stop and lock our stitches. So a feature that the machine has that you may not know about is when you're in a decorative stitch and a zigzag would be considered a decorative stitch, not a straight stitch, and you tap reverse at the end of your stitching. So watch what happens here. I'm stitching the satin stitching. I come to where I want to stop. I'm going to tap reverse. Look, it stops and locks your stitch. It doesn't take any more stitches. It will stop and lock that stitch for stitches that are in the machine, different tapering points. So I've listed the stitches and you can see the different ways that you can taper, different angles, and all of these are built into the machine. And here's the one that we use today, stitch number 340. And also I mentioned that you could elongate those stitches to get a different tapering point. So here is a sample of that. This is the stitch that we were using today and I have done it times one, there's two, three, and you can see the big difference it makes when you get up to four, how it really elongates that point, and then five. And there may be times when you want to use this type of a stitch, especially if you're doing art quilts or any type of stitches like that. Okay, to get back to the beverage coaster, and the next thing we're going to do I've actually taken this and marked the lines. You can refer to the instructions on where, where the line placement is. But this is a half of an inch from this border. And then I marked the line an inch from that line. And then an inch from that line. And then another half inch. We're going to do a decorative stitch, a decorative stitch, a decorative stitch. And then we're going to do a separating stitch, a triple straight stitch on here. So I've threaded my machine up with red thread because that's the thread that I want to use for my center decorative stitch that we're going to do here. So this is actually what we're going to do. We're going to stack some stitches so that we get this end result. But I wanted to show you the proper way to use the needle threader on the machine. I know I see a lot of comments about needle threaders. So the first thing you want to do when you're threading the machine is make sure that it gets into the last guide right before the needle. And then hit your needle up, needle down button. Lower your presser foot, hit your needle up, needle down button. And that's going to center, actually I've already selected my decorative stitch. So let me just go back to a straight stitch so that that needle's in the center. It doesn't have to be in the center to thread your needle, but it'll be easier for you to see that. So I'm going to put that thread back into the guide in front of the needle. I've lowered the presser foot and I've hit the needle up down button once, twice, to put that needle in its proper position, the height of the proper position. The foot's already down, so just leave it there. You're going to hook this into the threader. Pull it down on the side of the machine and it will go right through the needle. What happens is a lot of people will try to thread the needle with the needle threader and the needle might be in a lower position or higher position and just not quite in the proper position. So putting the needle up, needle down once and then again will ensure that needle's up in the highest position and you won't have any trouble with the needle threader. It works every time. Alright, so I'm going to select the decorative stitch. So to keep from switching the camera back and forth, you can refer to the instructions that we've printed. It has a picture or that you can print. It has a picture of the stitch, but I'm going to be using this stitch. And it's in the, uh, the category of the satin stitches. So it looks like it's the second one down under the straight stitch category on the right side of the screen. And then once I touch that, I'm going to select the folder. And this stitch happens to be in one, two, three, the fourth folder over. So I'm just going to select that folder and I'm going to select stitch 202. And we're going to stitch this down that line. No changes to the stitch, no changes at all. Just line it up like we did before with that mark on the 
presser foot with the line that you drew and so Now you can choose any decorative stitch for this. I'm going to show you in just a little bit several variations of the stitch stacking that I did with these stitches. We'll put a picture of this up at the end of this video so that you can actually see the stitches. And then I will also put a picture of, of the stitch numbers and how they were stitched, what order they were stitched in. Now when we're getting close to the end, you're going to need to slow down a little bit and see if there's actually enough room to do a complete pattern. And if you feel like there is, you can touch the pattern in. Remember that was this one right here, the little dot. And it will make the pattern completely and finish the pattern. But if you get to the end and you feel like there's not enough room or maybe you have to stitch another piece of the pattern, which is what I'm going to have to do here. So if I touch pattern in, it's going to finish the pattern and stop. Now I still have a little space here. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but I have a little space that needs to be filled in with a stitch. So I'm just going to start the next stitch and kind of watch it and when it gets to the point of where I think I want to end it, I can just touch the reverse and that will stop and lock that stitch right where I want it to be. So I'm just going to touch reverse, it's going to stop and lock it right there for me. And I have actually stitched that pattern down and there's your first decorative stitch. And now what we're going to do is we're going to stack a stitch beside of this. Let me just trim my threads and I'm going to leave the red thread in for this. Now I've played with several stitches but for this particular one we're going to use the one that looks like this. It gives it a nice lacy stitch. And that's stitch 203. We're in the same category and in the same folder. It's just the stitch right beside of this one. So what we want to do is you'll notice that the needle is in the left position. And that's what we're going to use to line that needle up with, with the left side of our first stitch that we did. So Position this under the foot so that that needle just barely touches the side of that previous stitch. And then just sew down. Now you're going to watch this as it's sewing so that that needle stays just touching the previous stitch when it swings to the left. And if you'll notice kind of how I've got this position with the presser foot. See how that's kind of riding down the middle? But you see just a little bit of red from the previous stitch peeking out the side of the foot. That's sort of what I pay attention to. If I see a little bit of red peeking out under that foot, I know that my stitch is going to connect. Take your time when you're sewing so that you get this lined up so that there's no space between those two stitches. And 
then when I get to the end, you know, I don't really know how this stitch forms or how it's going to end. So I don't know if I hit pattern end if it's going to continue a whole lot more stitches as it finishes the pattern. So what I'm going to do is watch it as I'm stitching. And when I get to an area where I'm, I think oh, I'm done, I want it to stop there. Remember, just touch reverse and it will stop and lock that stitch for you. And then we can go to the other side. Let me just clip that thread out of the way. And we're going to position this on the other side the exact same way. We're going to put that needle that's over to the left right on that previous stitch. And it's starting at the beginning of the stitch. Now anytime you use the pattern in or the reverse to stop and lock your stitch or your thread trimmers, it tells the machine to go back to the beginning of the stitch. So I didn't have to try to figure out if I was in the middle of one of these pattern stitches. It automatically took me back to the very beginning of that stitch. stitching and when it gets to a point where you think it's time to stop touch reverse and it will stop and lock and that's how you do stitch stacking so there's our stitches and I just want to show you this is a sample I made to give you some idea of all the different types of things that you can do with this stitch stacking our Juki machines have some really pretty stitches built in that give you this lacy effect and they're designed to be stacked together and if you look in your instruction manual it will even show you how a lot of these are done. So they're designed to be stacked together to give you this look. Um, I will have a slide at the end of this video that shows you what each one of these were the number of the stitch and in the order they were stitched. So if you want to experiment with this, you'll have that information. So this is just two stitches, two stitches but stitched. There's three stitchings here. There's three stitches here, three here, three here, and three here, but they're all different stitches. So it's fun to sit and play with these types of stitches. I like to do stitch stacking. Um, it gives me the opportunity to embellish something in the colors and the type of thing that I want instead of having to go out to the store and try to buy a trim that matches. Okay, so we've done our stitch stacking. So the next thing we're going to do is thread the machine up with blue thread and we're going to do these stitches. These are the stitches that are built into the machine that are designed that when you stitch them side by side they're larger stitches. And I have a sample of those I'll show you when we, we come back and we're ready to stitch that. And I'll show you how to line this up. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my machine out and we'll come back and we will do those two stitches on either side of this. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew this decorative stitch. And this is one of those stitches that when you sew it in mirror image of each other, you get a larger stitch. So it's two seven millimeter stitches put together. We're gonna sew one of those on this line and then we're gonna sew one of those on this line. I still have the eye foot on the clear foot because we're working with decorative stitches. And I just want to show you the stitches that are on this machine that are available to do this type of stitching with. So if I get that camera into focus pretty good. 
it's these four stitches right here. And when you stitch one down, turn it around and mirror image it, you get the look that I just showed you of the larger stitch. So you see that these are um, 362 through 365. And I actually have all four of them stitched out. So here they are already stitched out. So there is the, the first one, which is 362. This is 363, and we're actually going to use that one today. 364 and 365. I've threaded my machine with the blue thread, and I have selected stitch 363. And this time we're actually going to position it so that the left swing of the needle falls directly on that line. We're not using the center of the foot anymore, we're putting the needle on the line. And sew that stitch. Making sure that you keep that needle right on the line as it stitches. This will help us to line it up when we turn around and go back the other way. So when you're coming to the end, we need to stop with our pattern end feature because we want to be able to line this going back up. So we have to stop at the very end of the pattern. So as you're getting toward the end, go ahead and tap the pattern end button and make sure you have your needle down selected. And now we're going to pivot and come back up. But we need to mirror image this pattern. If we just stitched it back up, it would not line up the way we want it to. So we're going to mirror image this pattern. So I'm going to bring the camera over a minute. So just bear with me a minute and I'll set this camera up so that you can actually see the screen I'm working with. And I'll show you how we can mirror image this pattern. Tilt it a little bit the other way. Okay, I think you can see there. So to mirror image any of our patterns, we're going to select the little settings icon up here at the top. And then you get this pop-up window. So now we have the option to horizontal mirror image or vertical mirror image. And for this design we're going to choose vertical mirror image. So we're now going to sew this and I'm going to switch the camera back and we're going to sew the other side. Okay, so my needle is still in the left position. I have it mirror imaged over here, and as we're coming back up the other side, you just want to make sure that that needle stitches exactly over the previous stitching. So I'm going to get in a little bit closer to my stitching, just so I keep that. And just sew a little slower, making sure that that needle stays right on that line and you won't have any space. So it looks like it's been sewn as one stitch instead of two stitches.
And again, when we get to the bottom of this, we want to touch our pattern in button so that it stops after it's completed the pattern. towards the end, I'm going to go ahead and touch the pattern in, and it will stop and tie off when it finishes the pattern. And there we have our stitching, and we're going to do exactly the same on this line. So we need to go back over to the machine and disengage the mirror image, and just simply touch that icon on there and you'll see that it'll cancel the mirror image out. We're going to be sewing on this line next, same thing. Lower the needle so that it's right on the line and sew the stitch. Again, when you're getting to the bottom, touch the pattern in. Pivot. Go back over to your settings and touch the vertical mirror image again. And stitch down the other side. When you get to the bottom, touch pattern end again. And there we have our large decorative stitch. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put all of this together before we do our quilting. But I like to take this to the iron and press just to make sure everything's laying flat. And then when we come back, we're going to put this together and do some free motion quilting on it. So I'm also going to be changing my machine over to regular sewing thread. I'm going to put regular thread in the top and regular thread in the bobbin. So I'm going to go press and when we come back, we'll put this together. So now we're ready to put all of this together to make our little quilt sandwich before we do our free motion quilting. So the first thing you want to do is turn this over and pull away that tear away. So pull it away from all the sides 
and also pull it away from the inside here. You can leave it over here where the stitches are, but pull it away from in here. We don't need that extra bulk in there. We're going to be using a quarter inch seam allowance, so for this we're going to be using our P foot. This is our quarter inch quilting foot and for piecing and quilting. I'm just going to attach that to the machine. There we go. And I have selected straight stitch on my machine. So we're going to make our little quilt sandwich. So what we're going to do is put the batting to the wrong side of the front piece. It's very important that you layer it like this so that when we turn it right side out we have them in the proper position. And then we're going to take our backing piece and lay it down right side on top of the piece that we've been stitching on. And I like to make sure all my edges are even. I'll even take, um, put some pins on it to hold it together. And we're going to just sew a quarter of an inch all the way around here. We're going to leave about a three inch area here for turning so we can turn this right side out. So I'm going to start with my presser foot sort of down towards this way. And you want to get your quarter inch, you want to actually have the edge of the fabric against the edge of the presser foot. Now it's not that important that this is an actual quarter inch, but it's nice that we can use this foot to get a perfect seam all the way around, a nice narrow seam. So when I start, I'm just going to take a few stitches, tap reverse, to lock those stitches in place and then I'm going to sew around. So we just want to keep the edge of that fabric against the edge of the foot. Now this presser foot, we want to turn the corner when we get to the quarter inch so that when we turn we have it lined up with the, the quarter inch markings. So this foot might be a little hard to see on camera, but if you look at your presser foot, there are notches on the presser foot. There's one back here, and there's one in, up in front. And these notches are your quarter inch markings. So if you wanted to start a quarter of an inch in from the edge, you would line it up with this back notch. If you want to stop it a quarter of an inch before you get to the end, we're going to watch this little notch in this foot and as I sew and that notch gets even with the edge of my fabric, I can now lift the foot, pivot and get a perfect quarter inch. Now a lot of times you see I need, I, I could take one more stitch here, but when I do corners I like to actually take one diagonal stitch. So I'll drop it, take the diagonal stitch, and then turn it, and then continue on around. So again, as I'm getting toward the end, I want to stop when that little notch is right at the edge of my fabric. But if I'm going to actually take a diagonal stitch, I might want to stop right before it gets there. So I'm going to back up a couple stitches, take my diagonal stitch, and pivot, and continue with my seam. So we're going to sew around all four sides, and then when we get around to the other side, we'll leave that little opening for turning. So now that I'm coming back to my beginning, and here's my beginning stitch, I want to stop about here. I want to leave myself enough room that I can turn this easily. I'm just going to back stitch. And 
we have sewn around all of our edges. Now I like to trim my corners before I turn. It just makes a little less bulk in that corner area. And then you're going to take and turn this right side out. Now I like to use a point turner so that I can get in there and get those corners nice and neat as I get them turned. And then I'm going to take this to the iron and press those edges. So I don't have my point turner sitting here with me. So when I go to press, I'll get that point turner and make sure I get those edges nicely opened up. So I have nice crisp corners here. Okay, so I'm going to use my point turner, get those edges turned. I'm going to go to the iron and press this down and when we come back we'll finish it and do some free motion quilting. I have my machine threaded with the variegated thread, the red, white, and blue, both in the top of the machine and in the bobbin. I've left the patchwork foot on because we're just going to be doing a triple straight stitch so we can just use that foot. Now to select the triple straight stitch, it's going to be stitch number nine. Get this turned so the camera can see it. So it's stitch number nine on your machine. So it looks like this. So if you want to go ahead and select that. And all we're going to do is simply sew down that line to give us our definition so that we can do our free motion quilting on the other side. When you get down towards the end, you can just hit your pattern end and it will stop and lock that stitch for you. Alright, so now we have our line and we can proceed to the free motion quilting. Use your screwdriver and remove the screw that's holding the shank and the foot on. You'll need to remove this screw completely. And you'll notice that the foot drops off a lot and it has snap-on foot and then you also have the shank part. So take both of those off. Remove this screw. And then we're going to attach this foot. And this part right here will just slide up onto that shank. If you need a little help, just lift the presser foot up in the back and give you a little more clearance. Slide this up and then attach the screw back. I like to get it started with my fingers and then I can actually use the screwdriver to tighten it back down with. Now there are two different feet that came with this machine that are clear like this. This is the one that you want to use for free motion quilting. The other foot that came with the machine, and let me see if I can find it over here, that's also a clear foot that looks like this. This is your ruler foot. This is not your free motion quilting foot. Alright, so we're ready to start free motion quilting, but one thing we need to do is drop our feed dogs. So if you look at the front of your machine, this icon right here, when you touch it, will drop your feed dogs. So drop those feed dogs down. 
And the other thing that we have to do is when we drop the presser foot, we want to be able to move this under here. So just make sure that's moving freely. And this is a hopper foot. So what's going to happen is this foot's going to bounce up and down. So you don't have to worry about setting the clearance of the presser foot with the thickness of the batting. The foot's going to bounce up and down as it's sewing. So it'll take care of that issue. Now for free motion quilting, this is something you just really have to practice. I like to start with my needle up in a corner somewhere. I'm just going to do needle up and needle down. I like to bring that bobbin thread up. And if you used your thread trimmers before, that may be a, a little hard to grab. So I actually have both of them up. I'm going to drop the needle down in the corner, drop the presser foot, and then I'm just going to start sewing. Now remember, if you're free motioning, you're moving the fabric. The machine is not moving the fabric. So if you don't move, you're not going to get stitches. You're going to get little knots, and those knots will eventually cause your threads to break. So as I'm stitching around, I just kind of mosey around. Now you can do an actual stippling where no lines cross. Or you can do what I did in one of our samples. And I sort of just randomly stitched everywhere. If you're a beginner with free motion, don't worry about trying to stipple so that you don't cross lines. Just get the movement and just kind of quilt this all over. I'm going to have to get up a little close here so I can actually see as I'm stitching. I'll move the camera in a little bit so hopefully you can see better. And I am using red, white, and blue thread, so sometimes as the white gets to the needle, you don't see the stitching. And that's one reason I did the all over stitching instead of just a true stipple because of the thread I was using. So, what you can see is you can't really see that, so I went back over it. But I'm going to do just a regular stipple so that you can see how you can go around. And the key to this is to be comfortable in front of your machine and to get a good rhythm with the stitch speed and the movement of the fabric. I'm just going to sit and I'm sitting a little awkward at the machine so that the camera can get the, the full view of the stitching. But I've done a lot of free motion, so I know the speed versus movement of the fabric, but a lot of you are beginners and you have a problem with that. So we have another feature on this machine that really helps. It's sort of like a speed control. You can operate this machine by using this button on the front. So I'm going to unplug my foot control, and I'm just going to use this button. Now when I hit the start stop button, my machine's running, but oh wow, that's way too fast. I can control the speed that I like with my speed control right here. So get a speed that you like. And that's pretty good speed for me it down just a little bit and once you have a speed that you like now the only thing you really have to worry about is the movement of the fabric the machine's not going to speed up or slow down it's going to stay consistent and that's one of the things of learning how to do free motion is keeping that speed consistent with your movement just kind of move around and swing around a little. Probably for demonstration purposes I should have put a solid color in. But I think you can see what's happening. My foot's not on the foot control. The only thing running the machine is that start stop button. It makes it so nice to have my speed control. 
Now, I'm going to go back over some of the other areas because some of those areas showed up white. So I'll just swing back around those. So if you're using variegated thread and you don't want to do the all over quilting like I showed in my sample, maybe you want to change to a thread that's a solid color so you can see your stitching. But I just kind of sit and went around. And didn't worry about crossing stitches. Until I got the look I wanted with the thread. And then what I like to do is navigate either to the edge or a corner. If I can, I try to stop back in a corner. I'm just going to navigate back up to the corner here and stop the machine. Now, if you hold this in, then you can just stop that when you get it tied. Put your threads. And we have our quilting done, and we have a nice little beverage coaster. Here's another variation of the beverage coaster. Instead of doing free motion quilting, I just did some channel quilting here. I just drew some 45 degree lines, spaced them about a half inch apart, and then just quilted them. And you could also quilt them using the smart feed on the built in on the machine. So I want to thank you very much for attending our class today, and we hope to see you at some future Juki classes. I hope you've had a really good time, learned some things about your machine, and now you have a nice little project that you can start to use. I also want to mention, please check out our website. We have a couple of websites, and we actually have a blog. If you're looking for this project, again, you can go to jukiquilting.com, we have projects under there. We have an e-learn tab where we have some other types of information for learning how to use your machine for all different machines. And we also have a blog, Sewing with Juki. So make sure that you follow us on our blog. So again, thank you very much. See you next time. This is showing you all of the tapered stitches that are built into the machine. It also shows you at the bottom of the screen how you can taper the points to get the different looks. This is where we went into the settings menu and went in and elongated those tapered points between one and five. Here is a close-up view of the large combined stitch that we did on our project today. So these are the four stitches that are built into the machine, and you can combine them together to get a larger looking stitch. Here are some of the samples of the stitch stacking that I did. And on the next slide, it will actually give you the number of the stitch that was used and how the order in which they were stitched out.